What's up everyone? Welcome back to Snack Time. My name is Ben. In today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at a really cool project called Punch Card. It's based off of this little device here, but somebody decided I want to come up with a web page that does basically the same thing without having the device and paying the 365 bucks. So let's go ahead and check out this project. If you go over to Punch Card, which I've already set up, I set up a, a new a punch card here and it just asks you for the date and the activity that you want to attract and so basically every time you do it you press the button and you're able to see at a quick glance how many times and on what day I did a particular activity uh, this one I just named exercise but you can make as many as you want let's go through the process real fast let's go to new and it's going to ask you uh, what year is this for so let's go ahead and put we want to make it for 2025. And what is this card called? Uh, I'm going to say, uh, I'm just going to do JavaScript class and hit OK. And it's going to say, hey, do you want to create a new card? JavaScript class uh, for the year 2025. And I'm going to hit OK. So what you'll see here is you have um, JavaScript class for 2025. I put 2015 for some reason. Uh, apparently I'm living in the past. <laughs> and it's given me a, a punch card of, of different things that I can do here. So every single time I do a class for a particular day, and it's, and it's highlighting the day uh, that is today, which is May the 4th. May the 4th be with you. And if you did do that, that uh, activity, you just simply give it a click. And the next day, the same story. Uh, so as you go through, You'll basically just be able to see every time that you performed a certain activity. Now let's do this. Let's create a new one and let's do another one, 2025. And let's do this one. Let's just call this one exercise and I'm going to hit OK. So cool. Now we have two uh, punch cards. Uh, basically, they look the same. Only difference is they have a little bit of, of difference as far as the heading. Uh, this you can also update if you had a misspelling, you can update them uh, for this one. The 2015, when I said jack that up, let's go ahead and click on this and hit delete and hit yes. All right. And now we have this. Let's see if I refresh. Oop, I think I might have found a bug. <laughs> That's OK. That is what we are here for is to discover if something does happen that is buggy. Let's do this. Let's get on new. Let's just do test. Oh, actually, sorry, it's asking me for the year. I'm going to do new 2025 test. And here we go. OK. And so that is a little bit of a bug, not a problem. We were able to fix it by just creating a new one. And if we click on this and hit delete, uh, we are presented with other ones. So yeah, it's probably just a UI bug. It might have been uh, fixed by just signing out and signing back in again. Uh, you can protect this with a username and password, uh, but for now, we're just going to do a very simple deployment uh, for our local LAN. We're not going to really make this internet facing. Uh, if that is something that interests you, uh, I'll be happy to do another video to show you how to do that through Nginx Proxy Manager. But this is most likely one of those things where we're going to be just simply running it on our local machine, uh, but totally up to you. Uh, let's jump in and let's do the installation real quick. So we're going to start off this journey by heading off to the GitHub page. You can see the URL at the top here. I'm also going to put it in the description down below. A uh, very simple project and be very easy to do for us. Uh, if we scroll down and uh, he even makes reference of uh, this is inspired by this, uh, the calendar device that I was showing you. Uh, let's scroll all the way down to where it says the deployment. Uh, so you do have the option of do I want to assign a username and password and actually authenticate? When I go to this, it is totally up to you. Uh, let's go ahead and copy our compose.yaml file. Let's go over to our portainer, go to stacks, and we're going to add a new stack. And we're going to call this punch card. And we're going to paste. Let's take a look at this and see how he's done it. See if there's anything that we want to change. I do see a thing or two that we want to modify. Uh, so we're pulling the uh, the main punch card image. So he's using main instead of latest. That's fine. It's giving it a container name of punch card. Our volumes are kind of an absolute path. I may actually want to change this. So instead of this, I want to do, how about we just do instead of slash app slash punch card slash data, I'm going to change this to punch card data. 
Actually, I'll just leave it data because Portainer is going to add the punch card in front of that. And so we're saying, okay, app is going to point to the slash app slash data inside of our container. Uh, this is the next part that, that uh, pretty much asks you, hey, do you want to authenticate uh, with this? So do you want a username and password in order to access our punch card? I don't think that we do, unless you're making this internet facing. I can't imagine this is something that you, that you really need to keep you know, super secure. Again, up to you. Uh, the ports that we're going to be using at 5001, and it's going to be forwarding traffic to 5001 on the container. If you do want to change this port to something else, uh, this is the port that you're going to want to be modifying if you want to, to change it uh, on your machine. Uh, since we did specify a volume, uh, mapped volume, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and type in volumes here, and then I'm going to do tab, very important, and just call it data. And this will tell Portainer to go ahead and create the volumes uh, for this particular stack. Super quick project, but I thought it deserved a little bit of attention. Let's do this. Let's go ahead and deploy and make sure that everything that we did was correct. All right, looks like we are good to go. If we go to our containers, we see that we are listing on port 5001. I'm going to duplicate my browser here and go to 5001. I'm going to take away the HTTPS at the top here because it is not being protected by a security certificate. All right, and we're here. Uh, you'll know that it's working because there's just a little new button right there. Uh, if you did specify username and password, it will prompt you for that, but we didn't. So let's click on new. Let's just give it a date, 2025, and let's just do um, house cleaning. <laughs> let's see how many times we clean our house. There we go. Good to go. Uh, so it already it pulls the exact number of days in the month and presents you with that. And you can just start punching away as you go. So a very interesting way of tracking your tasks. Well, I know this was a super short one and very simple, uh, but like I said, I thought it was kind of cool. I thought it deserved some attention. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, I would appreciate any sort of uh, questions or comments if you want to leave them down below. Otherwise, I appreciate you spending some time with me and I'll see you in the next video.